Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Mr. Green and we are back on my Skyblock, guys. It's been quite a while since I played the Skyblock. It has honestly been about a month. I looked at the date stamp on the game before I loaded it up and I honestly couldn't believe it, guys. It has been about a month since I got to play this map. There have been a lot of exciting things going on in the past month, as you guys may know, if you follow me over on Twitter, if you're part of the Discord, or if you stay regular on my videos, you probably know that a lot of things has been going on with me lately. I moved to a new home in the past month, as well as we have been trying to start up a new server for a bunch of people to join, and that has been, that has been a task in itself, so... We've been very busy, and I've been trying to get back to my normal schedule for you guys. And I think we're about there. But today, I wanted to play some Skyblock. It's been, like I said, about a month, and I'm itching to play some. We've been playing a lot of regular survival over on the server in the past week. Been grinding out on that one probably a good 12 to 18 hours a day, honestly, guys. And it's been a lot of fun. But I do love my Skyblocks a lot, so I do want to be able to play some more Skyblock, and as many of you guys know, we have not gotten too far on this one. I hear some bad things above us, so hopefully we don't get attacked too much. I hear a witch. I don't know where the witch is, but I hear a witch. Is that it? There's the witch. Oh, there's there's two witches. Woo. And we have llamas. <laughs> ah! Dangerous. So guys, we're going to go around. We're going to explore a couple of islands today. We're going to check out some new things and have some fun. And I'm excited. Like I said, I haven't played for a while. So we're going to do some cool stuff today. We've been trying to stay on top of our crops as much as possible. As well as cooking the stone. We're trying to get just all the emeralds we possibly can. So I know there is some really fun things that we can buy once we get into the nether. And we get some of the secret things that are in there for us to access. We have, I believe... I can't remember which version I actually have, guys, so I don't know if I have the custom villager like some of you guys might. I am on the latest version of the Skyblock, but not the latest version of the Skyblock. Technically, some of you guys have a version that is just a little bit further than mine. As you can see by the empty space down here below the ice island, I don't have the geode in my world. That is the main island that I am missing. Can I also take about two seconds to show you guys this real quick? I've had probably about a dozen comments in my comment section about this. And it's the question, where is the end? How do I get to the end? How do I get to the end island? Where is the end island? How do I access the end? You guys have said it pretty much every different way possible. But I wanted to point it out to you guys, and I'm not trying to make fun of nobody, because I definitely understand some of you guys have some low render distances, so maybe you can't even see it. But, if you can't see it, make sure you go to about the center of your, center of your island, which is going to be the, the bedrock piece on the middle of your island, and just look up. <laughs> it was covered up by my mob farm. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the worst reveal ever, but there it is. It's right up there guys So if you don't have the best of render distance just just start towering up a little bit from the center and you'll see it, it, it It's definitely up there a little ways, but that that is the end island If you guys want to go to the end and fight the dragon, that's that's where you go so one of the main things I want to accomplish today, I think, is we want to put together a cow farm over on the Mushroom Island. Well, not really a, a cow farm, but a mushroom farm, because we do have the mushroom spawner over there. So we could go over to the Mushroom Island and make just a small little trap 
for the mushrooms to spawn and fall into and then push them into a campfire or something like that to be able to cook them and we could get a lot of cooked beef as well as leather which we're going to need the leather for our enchantment table here soon and I don't think I have a whole lot of leather saved up really I mean I probably got some somewhere but definitely not enough for what we're going to need not to mention just being able to have an AFK food source where I could just come over here every night and just kind of hang out and get some free food. Not to mention apparently some name tags. <laughs> that would be a that would be a good thing, I feel like. So I think what I need to get is maybe a shovel. We definitely need to get some silk touch before we take up all the mycelium because that is one of the Achievements on the board. Let me go and check to make sure we haven't gotten that one yet But I don't believe we have and We definitely need to bring back our silk touch pickaxe, so I'm gonna go get some supplies get a couple of things sorted away And we're gonna head back over to the island here in just a minute You guys know I have a thing about my inventory If it's even a little messy, I don't like it. So yeah, we have not gotten the mycelium one yet. So we definitely need to take our silk touch over there and grab some before we pick it all up. What are you doing in my house? You are not welcome. He's not even selling anything good. Get out of here. Spit at me. You're in my house. I'm thinking we might put together a villager crop farm. We could possibly do that one today. I think we might have enough emeralds to get the villager spawn eggs that we need. Um, I don't think we have any villager spawn eggs, do we? We have these spawn eggs. I'm going to have to go searching through some stuff, guys. Like I said, it's been about a month since I played this game. I'm going to have to see what I have in my, in my storage. I know I have some stuff stuck away, but I don't think we have any villager spawn eggs yet. So we might have to go buy some, but we do have the emeralds. Or the green bucks. We took off the texture from our pack. Oh no. <laughs> See it's usually when I get out at this point. That I just start feeling very nervous. For whatever reason. I, I'm not sure why it is. But I don't feel entirely safe standing here. Okay so if you guys are going to make this little crop farm. Like I am making your square. Should be 13 by 13 I believe. And the best way to do that is I usually outline the 13 by 13 and then we do one, two, three, four, and then this is where your water is going to go. Or one of them. And you will actually need four sources of water for this farm, guys. And then we'll be able to find the next spot for the water super easy because we can count one, two, three, four. And then this will be where you put your next source of water. So we'll go ahead and put a piece there. And we can fill in back here. So we'll leave a space right here for the next source of water. We can go ahead and fill in right in front of this area. Just like this. And y'all y'all can have it streaming down if you want like that. It's not really a big deal as long as you got water there. If y'all want to put in a like a, a waterlogged stair or something like that, you can as well. Just kind of up to you, however you want to do it. And then again, just like we did right here, we're going to put four blocks in between. One, two, three, four, and then so that will be number five. We'll go ahead and take that out, and that's where our water will go for that one. 
and we'll do it one more time one two three four and then break out number five right there so you guys will end up having four chunks of water in here i'll show you once i get this all filled in it's gonna look a lot better in just a second so that's about what it's gonna look like when you get done with that now we need to choose some sort of stone to go around the outside of it and since we don't have my personal favorite at this time the deep slate I think we're probably gonna go with some stone brick sounds pretty nice and we got plenty of stone just sitting here cooking so I'm gonna grab a few stacks of this and we'll just go ahead and turn that into some stone brick don't know if that'll be enough we'll grab a little more not really hurting anything And after that, we need to get lots of stone. We're gonna just take it all. So we need to take this stone over to our little villager friend here in the hub. Try to make a little bit of money. So in the farm that we're gonna make we can either make carrots or potatoes really easily personally i'm a big fan of carrots because i like making golden carrots eventually once we get a gold farm up and running which that will be in a little bit we are definitely gonna get one of those built up because we have no real source of gold right now <clears throat> and we definitely need to get some source of gold so that way we can start trading with the piglins in the nether to get some other resources. So I do think we're, we're, we're probably going to go for carrots on our farm. And we got enough to get our villager spawn eggs here. We'll go ahead and buy a couple from him. We should probably go ahead and set up a villager breeder just to be more efficient, but I feel like we might have enough money that it won't really matter. <laughs> I think we're about to be pretty rich, guys. So we're going to go ahead and outline this real quick and just make it a little bit prettier. But we are going to have to smelt a good amount, probably, probably like two stacks of sand, which is going to cost us some more money in the store. If you guys would ever like to watch me play a more survival intensive skyblock, please let me let me know down below. I have no problem doing that, guys. I've just been playing this one because this is my personal skyblock that I designed and I've been very excited to play it for a while. So that's why I've been we've been going on with this one lately. What What are you doing with your llamas, bro? That poor llama. Never had a chance. So if you guys are building along with me and you're trying to build this farm, which is super easy farm, by the way. Big shout out to Silent Whisper. He is the main designer of this that I watched the video on. I'm not sure if somebody else created the farm other than him, but he is the one who taught me, so... That's where my credit is going. So at this point, we are going to need some sand. And we have a good amount of emeralds, so we're going to take a little bit extra with us just in case. But we're going to go grab a few stacks of sand over at the store. I think sand is pretty cheap if I checked. Uh, I believe it should be one, for, one emerald for eight pieces. Yeah, that's not too bad. We can afford that. We do need, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get three stacks. Just call it good there. Hopefully that's enough. I think it should be. But this is actually going to take us probably a few minutes to cook up. I was not very prepared to do this. But it shouldn't take too long. We'll get this all cooked up. And as soon as it's ready to go, we're going to be able to go finish up our farm. But 
while that's cooking, we can go ahead and throw in the hoppers that we need. And we actually have enough sitting here, right, ready to go. We're going to need two fence posts. And we're going to go ahead and get a couple of chests out as well. Just go ahead and take all of these just in case. Never know how many we're going to need. So we're going to throw this right here. Misplace this one. Don't 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 put that one there. And we need two fence posts. One fence post right here. And one fence post right here. And this is where our villager is gonna stand for the rest of his life. He will stand inside this little cell here and starve forever. I know it's probably not the nicest farm ever, but guys, we're gonna get a lot of carrots, okay? I promise. You won't feel so bad after you check the chest. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some stairs or some slabs to kind of waterlog. I don't really want to have all the water flowing down from the farm. I kind of want to keep it a little bit neater. We seem to have a thunderstorm, though, that came out of nowhere. All right, we definitely got to make that safer, guys. I'm going to fall off the edge. Uh, where is our water? We have water somewhere, right? There it is. We have another bucket as well. So once we have all four of our water areas filled in with water, remember we have a 13 by 13 square, guys, of grass. You can use grass or dirt, doesn't matter, does not have to be grass. Make sure you waterlog some stairs, waterlog some slabs, just put a square of water, do whatever you got to do in the center, and then we're going to put a block right on top of that to just cover it up. And then we're going to go ahead and put a torch on top of each one of the blocks, just to keep it lit up inside the farm. And we got a little bit of our glass already smelted up. Almost a stack of it, probably not enough to finish off what we're going to do, but guys, we're going to go ahead and make our walls out of glass. And we're gonna make a two high wall going all the way around, which I do not have enough yet. We're almost there. To be honest, guys, this farm gets a little overpowered. Like, it, it, it it's insane the amount of stuff that will come out of this farm after just just a little bit of time. Doesn't hardly take any time at all. We're going to go ahead and put two chests here. Just to make sure we have enough room. Like I said, guys, this thing gets going and it just, it produces so much you can't even hardly keep up with it. So hopefully that'll be enough there. We can put that one right there. So that way, if anything gets thrown into this chest... It's going to go back down here. So we got two double chests for storage. It's going to be plenty of carrots. And I, I know you guys are sitting there thinking, oh, there's no way you're going to get two double chests that quickly. Just watch. Now, guys, normally when you build this yourselves, you probably won't have the luxury of having spawn eggs because you'll be doing this in survival. I am in a modded survival in a sky block, obviously. So we have some spawn eggs here to use for ourselves, so I'm going to take advantage of that. But if you guys don't have spawn eggs, it's really not that difficult to get yourself a couple of villagers and just put them inside of here. But what you guys need to make sure is very, very important right now. Make sure they are fresh villagers, meaning they are villagers that have not worked or eaten before. You do not want villagers that have anything in their inventory. You want it. You want to have two villagers that have nothing in their inventory is your main goal. So right here, we're going to go ahead and throw in one guy, which will be the guy that never gets food. He never gets to eat. 
So we're going to drop him in and hopefully be able to switch over and trap him quick enough. There we go. Alright, so he is trapped in there and he is good to go. Go ahead and block over the top of him. That way he can't get out. Nothing can happen to him. And of course we get a thunderstorm as soon as I get started. I'm going to jump out of here and go get sleep. So once you have one villager brought in, you guys can change the villager in the corner to a profession that you want to use or not. But keep in mind that he probably won't refresh his trade because he won't have a workstation near him. But mainly you just need to lock in his trade. Little waste of our emeralds here, but we're going to buy a really expensive tunic. And put it on. <laughs> I guess. Alright, so we got a tunic. This guy is locked in. And he will never be anything but this. He is stuck. Next, we need to do that one more time. But this guy needs to be a farmer. So, wherever he links up to, we're going to have to end up breaking a few workstations probably to get him to link up to the right thing. Yeah, you're not going anywhere, Mr. Villager. So let's get a composter and get it ready over there so that way we can hopefully get him linked up to a closer one. There we go. He linked. Quick, quick, buy the bread. There we go. All right. So he is stuck in as a farmer. We have a farmer and... A, uh, just a random villager that is hungry and ready to take the food. So now what we can do next. Uh oh. Quick. Oof. <laughs> yeah, you thought you had a way out, Mr. Villager, didn't you? Alright, so now we need to go get ourselves a hoe, which I think I have a diamond one down in my basement here. Once we get a hoe, we can hoe up this entire area and then get our crop farm started. Now, unfortunately, this is not going to be as simple. We're going we're gonna to have to get some carrots going. So let me find out where the carrots are at, because we, we have some carrots somewhere. But I think I'm going to have to use some of my bone meal from my new mob farm, which is fine. I'm okay with using that. That's why it's here. But we're going to have to use some of our bones. We only have one side collection. We have more witches. So yeah, let me get the carrot sorted out, guys, and I will be right back with you. Alright, guys, so we're going to make it just a little crude carrot growing machine here. It's going to be a temporary device. We'll probably have it set up for about five minutes, maybe. But if we go ahead and throw that just like that, put something right there so that we can throw an observer. Just put an observer facing into the dispenser like that, and then put another one facing into itself just like that. We can take a lever and stop that annoying ticking. And I guess I probably put the, the water in the wrong place there, but... So we put it in just like this. We have now two observers facing into each other with a dispenser facing into the carrots. Now we just get ourselves some bones here. Actually, probably keep those spread out. 
hopefully we can get enough here. I, I have no idea how much this will take. And if we turn this on, it might get a little clicky for you guys, but you guys are going to see just like that. We can grow the carrots, break the carrots, grow the carrots, break the carrots, grow the carrots, break the carrots. This works a little bit faster if you got three dispensers working on it, guys, but this shouldn't take too long for me. All right, so we can get an, get rid of that annoying ticking there, guys. I'm going to jump down here and get this whole area hoed up before the next day. So this is what you want to do, guys. When you're ready to get this going, honestly, I probably should have hoed this already, but just get this whole area hoed in. We got to make sure we got crop areas, and this is why we also want to put a roof over the top of this. Mainly, you want a roof over your entire top of the entire build, just so your villagers aren't getting struck by lightning. Because it could definitely happen. But you definitely, definitely don't want your villagers jumping on top of these blocks. Because if they jump on top of these blocks, they will mess up your crops. So really, I like to just cover all of this in. Sometimes I make a second layer to this farm, but I really don't think I'm going to make a second layer on this one. Just considering it's a sky block, considering this one's probably going to be OP in it by itself. So, don't really think I'm going to need a second one, guys. But it really is just a good idea to get this all completely covered in. Because like I said, guys, you don't want to come back to your crop farm and just see a couple of witches hanging out in there. That would be... Just, just not good. One other really good piece of info, guys. Make sure you have these fence posts on here. Apparently, this is supposed to make sure that the villager can't throw them directly here and get them to the villager. They have to throw them at least here, or if they get thrown here, the fence post will stop it from going across. Just make sure you get the fence posts on both sides, just like that. And once you have your farm set up, and it's looking like this, guys, you can go ahead and take your carrots or potatoes and throw them to your villager. It is nighttime, though. He should pick them up, even though he's not going to plant them. Hey, buddy. There's some carrots over there. Go get the carrots. Go get the carrots. He doesn't want them because it's nighttime, I think. What are you? Stop being a weird villager and go get the carrots. You really gonna make me come in here again? <laughs> there we go. So you throw your carrots, your potatoes, whatever, to the villager, and he will start planting just like that. You guys, there is like a glitch going on. I don't know if it's a glitch or if this is just how it works. But if your villager ever runs out of carrots or potatoes in his inventory, and he just completely runs out of stuff in his inventory, he will stop working. So you're going to have to toss him some more carrots. before, Even, even if he has like an, an entire field of carrots sitting in front of him, he has to have something inside of his inventory. So if you ever see your villager just kind of walking around and you're like, hey, why aren't you doing anything? You're just standing in a field full of carrots. Maybe toss him a couple of carrots and he'll probably start working. But I don't think he's going to have enough carrots to plant the entire field here. But we're going to let these grow up. We're going to harvest some of them. And we're going to keep tossing them back to him until we got the full field grown here. And then once we got that all the way grown, it will be a functioning farm, guys. So that's quick and simple, just unlimited carrots and potatoes. Like, honestly, you get, you guys can do this with beetroot and bread, I believe, as well. But it's just, I like carrots and potatoes. If, if, if you're really going to pick one, carrots or potatoes is my favorite. 
I'm going to have to make some more glass because I don't have silk touch. And I'm going to keep breaking it. Or we could put a door on this thing. That would probably work. Put an iron door on it so they can't get out. Look at that happy little villager working. Okay. So he ran out of carrots. So now he is going to be kind of distressed because he doesn't know what to do. So once some of these carrots grow up, we're going to go in there and harvest them out and then just toss them back to the farmer. And he should have no problems again. But while we wait for that to kind of happen, I think we're going to run over and start clearing out the mushroom. Not entirely sure if we're going to be too far away for it to run. Hopefully the carrots will still be growing. Shouldn't be that far. I do need to get a shovel made. We don't have a shovel. Oh, we do have a shovel. It's just right here. Hello. Ah, I forgot my silk touch, guys. Look at me, I was about to go ruin my achievement. I do have Silk Touch. I don't have a very strong Silk Touch, if I remember. At least I thought I had Silk Touch. Uh-oh. Did we lose our Silk Touch? Ooh, that couldn't be good. That could be very bad, guys. I'm not seeing it. Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. I found it. Okay. We got a piece of mycelium, and that should be an achievement for us. Achievement unlocked. Shroom time. So we're going to clean up some of this dirt here. Just get the area flattened out. Like I said, we're going to make just a small little... Not not anything too elaborate. Just kind of make a little, uh, little water funnel into a campfire is what I'm thinking, guys. Shouldn't even be that hard of a farm to make. is going to involve just a little bit of digging, a little bit of mining. But we don't mind that, do we? I think that's the one thing I'm upset that I don't get to play with on the scab block is the deep slate. I really, I really enjoy the deep slate, guys. It's one of my favorite blocks now. The deep slate bricks and the deep slate tiles, cobbled deep slate, deep slate. I just, I love deep slate, guys. It's one of my favorite blocks. More name tags. Woo. All right, so the mushrooms should actually stop spawning now since there is no more mycelium left on the ground. Because I found out one day, weirdly enough, mushrooms don't even spawn out of spawners off of mycelium. So that spawner is essentially a dead spawner right now until I put down more mycelium, which I found very interesting, honestly. It's just not something I would have imagined would be a thing. Alright, looks like we're going to have to set up a chest over here. Just to dump out some of these items. We got too much stuff. Put all my dirt away. Nice little bit of ores in this... Some diamonds, some lapis, some emeralds, some redstone, iron, coal, a little bit of everything. What is this blue stuff? I can imagine a time before lapis was used for enchanting, guys, because I heard lapis used to only be blue dye, correct? Uh... I don't know if that was just back before enchantments back before enchantments were a thing or if that was just back before enchantments costed lapis. I, I really don't know. I'm I'm fairly new to Minecraft, honestly, compared to some of you older people that have been around for like ten years. Uh I've only been around for a couple of years, so I don't know everything. 
I swear, half the time on like any Skyblock map I play, it is just raining. Why does it rain so much on Skyblocks, guys? It's something I will never understand. All right, so we are just about finished up with the mushroom farm that we've been setting up over here. I actually, I accidentally made it just a little bit too big, guys. I didn't really measure quite right. <laughs> You're gonna see my foolishness here. The original box we made was just way too big, and I, I realized my mistake like right away. So now we should be able to put just a piece of water in every corner here. And that's going to go ahead and push anything that falls right down inside of here right into the campfire area. So now when we get a cow to fall in, he's going to fall in just like that. Going to burn in the campfire and then we will go ahead and get the drops coming down through the campfire. That's obviously not going to be super fast. They they still have to walk off the sides, which is why we have the trap doors. But it's free food. It's free leather. It's something that I could sit here in AFK for a few hours and good, get a good amount of drops. So that's probably what we're going to end up doing. But right now, the campfire has nowhere to go. So we need to go down below now. And this is where we're going to set up a little hopper system with a few different chests. Probably just put a couple of chests down here. We don't need too many. And there we go. So simple as it gets, guys. Don't need anything too much more complicated than that gonna flow into that chest and it'll flow into this chest so we can just sit here in afk for a while and eventually we're gonna start getting some drops right inside this chest of course we gotta kill some cows so there we go just like that guys and of course it could be a lot more effective if we had like you know a trident killer or something on there but again it's just me on a sky block it's not like we need an insane amount of drops here guys so we're just gonna make a little mini farm it's effective it works so there we go guys as you can see we got some we got some drops flowing in now we had to make a couple of little changes to it I ended up having to move the campfire up just a little bit higher and uh, I think we're probably gonna end up losing some drops probably just a little bit um, I don't know we'll, we'll, we might come up with a different design for this We'll see what all happens. Maybe I'll bring a few more hoppers in because we, we could bring a few more hoppers and line it around here to pick up some extra drops. But honestly, guys, I feel like we're going to have enough stuff. Like we, we've been sitting here for just a couple of minutes already. And look at that. So the main thing here I am wanting is some leather. Some extra food is great. Um, I don't know if we'll actually get any name tags from this because I think the name tags is a drop that you actually have to kill them with the player. So, um, yeah, we might not get those drops through here, but we're going to get definitely get a lot of raw beef and a lot of steak. So let's run back over and check on our little farmer friend. And see if he's been moving the carrots around. Like I said, I don't know if this is close enough that this farm will run while we're over at the Mushroom Island. That might actually be too far away. Let's go ahead and take a peek in here. But it does seem like some of our carrots have been growing. Yeah, it definitely looks like we have some carrots growing up. So I think we might be actually close enough to make it run. But as you can see, our little farmer friend in there is very frantic, just kind of running around. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't have any carrots. So once this farm ends up growing up completely, guys, I'm going to jump in there, harvest it up, and give him lots of carrots to replant. And then this farm will be fully running, guaranteed, by the next time we play the Skyblock. 
But honestly, guys, I feel like this is probably going to be a great place to call it for the day. We got a lot of progress. Like, we got two new farms. We have a brand new leather and beef farm and a brand new carrot farm. Both going to be able to just kind of hang out in AFK and just get a lot of awesome drops from them. I'm really excited about the carrots because, as you guys know, we can take our carrots over to our villager friend in the hub over there. So we just go push that button over there on that bedrock. Go talk to our villager friend and we can sell, sell him 18 carrots or one emerald. So we're going to be selling carrots all day long and getting rich. If you guys like this kind of content, make sure you go down below, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications, you guys know the drill. Make sure you get notified of all of my future videos, including the Skyblocks, including the Green Room server content, including all my map stuff that I do on mcpedl.com. Links for that will be down in the description below, guys. And if you would like to chat with us a little more personally, make sure you hit us up on our Discord. We have a Discord server where you guys are welcome to join. Come hang out with us, talk to us. You can ask us questions. You can request tutorials. You can ask me about how my maps are going. Just really anything you guys want to do in the Discord, that's what we're there for. You can also find the link if you guys would like to fill out the application to join the Green Room SMP. You will be able to find that application inside our Discord. So if you guys want to fill that out for your chance to join the Green Room SMP and be able to play with us and some amazing players, make sure you go fill out that application. I just want to say thank you very much, guys, for your patience with me over the past week or two. Really, over the past month, I know it's been a little sporadic, and I promise to be a little more consistent on the videos now that I am in the new home. We are officially done moving, guys. We're, we're in the house. We're here. So, hopefully things are going to be a lot better. And I also want to say a big thank you, guys. We have already passed over 650 subscribers, I believe. It's probably more than that by now, guys. But we're on the road to 700 as of right now. And even, even way more after that. Like, guys, we, we're just going to keep going up and up. The sky's the limit. But I just wanted to say thank you very much to you guys for all the love, all the support that you guys have been giving me lately. I definitely appreciate it. And until next time, guys, my name is Mr. Green, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.